Hey gang, Cheryl Blake Platt, and today I try a classic malt liquor. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Colt 45, one of the classic malt liquor brands out there, also one of the uh, oldest brands out there. <coughs> Excuse me. A little background into Colt 45. Colt 45 was released in 1963 by the National Brewing Company. Now today the brand is owned by Pabst Blue Ribbon, but if you look on the website and I believe on the label, it also refers to the G, G. Heilman Company. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos about old school brands, you know that G. Heilman at one point in time has owned a lot of these old school brands, things like Old Style, Blatt's, Rainier, Lone Star, what have you. Uh, they even owned Paps at one time, which now it's in reverse. Paps owns them and also owns a lot of the other brands that G. Heilman did at one time. Uh, quick little G. Heilman story that's kind of funny in a twisted kind of way. Uh, in the early 90s, G. Heilman came out with a malt liquor brand. This is when they owned Colt 45 and Paps. They came out, they were going to come out with a new malt liquor brand named Power Master that they were going to cater to the African-American community. Uh, obviously, someone in marketing uh, had dropped the ball there. Uh, they immediately got pushback, and not just for that particular brand, but one of their other brands, Colt 45. Uh, several African-American uh, community leaders had uh, suggested a boycott. Luckily, cooler heads prevail, and the ATF at the time kind of stepped in, and G. Heilman ended up dropping the brand, <laughs> but it is... Kind of ironic that G. Heilman almost got uh, Colt 45 boycotted. Um, as far as the name itself, most people think the name Colt 45 comes from the classic gun. A lot of people say, well, look, it has a horseshoe and it had the, the, the horse on there. It must be a Western thing. Actually, that's not where it comes from. Uh, Colt 45 actually comes from a former Baltimore Colt running back, number 45 in your program, number one in your heart, Jerry Hill. Uh, he was on the 1963 team and the National Brewing Company was based in Baltimore. Uh, if you know a little bit about <coughs> football, again, excuse, excuse me, uh, those 60 Colts teams had the great Johnny Unitas, um, John Mackey tied in, uh, Curtis at linebacker, they were just loaded and so they were beloved by the city. So it kind of makes sense a, a regional brewery would name something after one of their favorite players. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, again. Uh, the original commercials for uh, Colt 45, oddly enough, kind of catered to it toward a white collar suburban crowd. They had a gentleman in a suit and tie. He was always very casual, very demure. There would always be something kind of crazy going on, and he would have a schooner, a classic schooner. We don't see enough schooners of beer out there. He would be drinking from a schooner of beer, just chilled and relaxed. Uh, one of those old commercials, you'd see a brief cameo by the great comedian Red Fox. So I, I definitely would like to catch one of those. <clears throat> in 1978, they switched uh, the marketing uh, campaign to Dynamite Taste. That The beer had Dynamite Taste. And in one of those commercials, a young Ted Danson, years before Cheers and Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, so again, that'd probably be another commercial to look for on YouTube. And lastly, talking about commercials you need to find on YouTube, in 1980, they kind of had a shift in their marketing. They started uh, catering more toward the African-American crowd. And that's when they brought in the great Billy D. Williams, Billy D. Williams of Star Wars and Brian Song fame. Just one of the coolest old school uh, guys out there. And he always had very cool demeanor to him. He would be at some bar, dimly lit. He'd always have a pretty young lady with him. And his Colt 45, and the slogan was, it works every time. And just, he could pull it off, and there was just an old school cool to him. So if you get a chance, again, look those commercials up on YouTube. Real quick, I want to talk about some of their other products they've had and, and currently have out there. In the early 90s, they came out with something called Cool Colt. And I'm not making this up. This was a mint-flavored malt liquor. Now, the brand did not take off, and it, it, they ended up canceling the product line. But I would love to be in in the R&D uh, meetings with that product. I've been like, am I the only one that thinks this is crazy? Do they, are we really gonna do this? I, I just, I could not imagine what that meeting was like. Uh, next is Colt 45 Double Malt. This is an 8.5% ABV malt liquor. Uh, has two horseshoes on the label because you get a little 
extra kick there. Uh, if you think about the concept of malt liquor and how we consume it today and in the, you know, in the recent past, however, you want more alcohol, kind of makes sense. Uh, lastly, in 2011, they came out with Blast by Colt 45. This was a fruit-flavored malt beverage, 12% uh, ABV. They brought in Snoop Dogg uh, to help promote the product. But they got a little pushback on it, A, because they ramped up ABV. This is at a time we still had a lot of places that, well, if it's over X percent, we, you know, it has to go in a liquor store, not in a convenience store. And, well, we don't want the children. And it's always about the children of Arbor. And also, too, this is around the same time Four Loco was having their issues about being an alcoholic energy drink. So Colt kind of caved into the FDA and told them, all right, look, we're not going to put caffeine or taurine or guarana or any of that. It's just going to be a you know, higher ABV malted beverage, and they were able to uh, release the product. Well, enough about uh, before we try this particular malt beverage, let's check out the stats. All right, today I thought I'd talk to you about flavored malted beverages. We, we touched on a little bit with Blast from Colt 45, but one thing I've noticed in the last few years, 30 years ago when I started drinking, if you wanted to get drunk, cheap, malt liquor was the way you went. Uh, you could always find, you know, a 40 ounce at your local convenience store, not too far from your apartment, what have you. It was just easy route to go. Nowadays, it appears that the old school malt liquor drinks are leaving and now these flavored malt beverages have come in. So I kind of want to touch on them. First, I want to kind of get uh, the, the language down right. This is a malt liquor. A malt liquor is beer based and basically just a ramped up beer. They add what's called adjuncts, other fermentables, things generally like, it's generally corn solids, uh, powdered corn sugar, sometimes corn syrup, um, or rice, rice solid, rice solid, rice syrup solids, what have you, something like that to bump up the ABV and also kind of help call, cost cut, you know, cut costs from the standard two-row or six-row malted barley. Those, those aren't as cheap as corn adjuncts. What we're talking about here is, is, is uh, more kind of leaving the beer world. Uh, actually, the official definition of a malted beverage is at least, made with at least 25% malt. Now, you can malt any grain, but for our purposes, we're talking about malted barley, um, which means 75% can be made with other other kind of adjuncts, generally corn, just because corn's cheap here in the U.S. Also, too, you have to have 700 pounds, or seven and a half pounds of hops per 100 barrels produced. Now, remember, a barrel of beer is 31 gallons, so we're talking about seven and a half pounds of hops per 3,100 gallons of beer. Now, I'm going to get a lot of hop aroma or flavor, and I got a feeling the hops they use are low alpha acid hops, so they're not necessarily as strong as hops anyway. Why is this being done? Well, because if you throw hops in there, somehow now it's closer to the beer and it's not this and it's that and we can sell in the convenience store and don't have to sell in the liquor store. We get taxed a different way. And that's kind of the games that are having to be played today. Um, oddly enough, these flavored malt beverages, because now they're no longer just a beer, and a perfect example is, is Four loco, because they started adding stuff like caffeine and taurine and guarana, whatever, now these things aren't just regulated by the TTB, which regulates beer producers, but it's also regulated now by the FDA. So now you got an extra layer of governance, taxes, regulation, verbiage, and that's why you're going to see the verbiage on this stuff is kind of cloudy. Also, too, you've had advancements in the malting technology. If you went to a home brew shop and bought powdered malt extract, which is what a lot of home brewers do, even the light stuff, you'll still get a golden color. You'll, you'll still produce something like a Coors Light Bud Light color-wise. Well, now they figure out how to strip all that color out. And so now you have something that's technically malt, but you don't have any color. Also, too, they're changing verbiage. They're changing brewing techniques. Now, you know, now we've got brewing enzymes, so we can be more efficient using less malt and it, it's getting kind of cloudy. A good example of this is not your father's root beer. They consider themselves a craft beer and a craft brewery. Would you call it craft beer? No, nah, I probably wouldn't. But uh, 
that's what they are. And it was already getting confusing, and now you add the hard seltzers in there. And remember, we've made hard seltzers before on the channel. It's just corn sugar and generally no hops added. Now, I got a feeling they do it for tax purposes, whatever. But again, what, what is it that you're really drinking? It's kind of hard to figure out. And I got a feeling it'll get worse before it'll get better, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately, the marketplace moves so much faster than the regulators. But I just kind of want to touch on that because that's what I see kind of replacing the old school malt liquors. Like, you just not going to see too many 21-year-old kids knocking back a Colt 45 anymore. It's only for old school people like me. Well, enough about those malt beverages. Let's drink a malt liquor. All right, nice golden color. I'm going to say just a shade darker than your generic light beer. Plenty of head, plenty of effervescence. Oh, the smell of semi-fresh adjuncts in the morning. <laughs> Let's give her a try. It's okay. Um, has a little extra body, but it's kind of even though there's plenty of bubbles, it still feels kind of flat on the palate. Um, if ever, if I remember right, there's only six IBUs in this thing, so you're not really getting a lot of, you're not getting any hop aroma or flavor or whatever. It's not sweet, so at least there is a little bit of balance there. I mean, there, there's a little viscosity adjunct sweetness that comes with any of these beers. Um, Yeah, it just is. It's uh, that being said, you know, it's an extra percent, percent and a half over your generic light beer. I, I see a college kid, you know, definitely liking that part. Um, actually, not terrible. I I remembered it bad in college, or wasn't that great in college. Uh, but it's probably because we drank the stuff warm a lot of times, so that probably made a difference. Uh, it's okay. That's all it is, but it, it's kind of a flashback to uh, some old school memories. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.